my gosh, there is so much to learn about wine and there are so, so many videos. I just need to take a breather from it all. <laughs> Funny, you should be saying that. That's exactly what we're going to be learning about in this video. Letting your wine take a breather. You know, you hear people talking all about it all the time and you're not quite sure what it means. Uh, this is, is one video in a four video series about maximizing the aromas and flavors of your wine. In this video, we're going to be learning five things about letting your wine breathe. We're going to look at number one, what does letting wine breathe mean? Two, should you let all wines breathe? Number three, does letting it breathe really make a taste difference? Four, how do you let a wine breathe? Five, I'll call this a um, try it at home segment, plus a little bonus will be at the end, which I'll call, call a restaurant. You'll find that these things are so simple and will make such a difference with your wine, you'll be absolutely shocked. By the time you finish with this video, you'll know all you need to know about how to get your wine to both smell and taste better. Keep in mind, at any time, if you like what you hear, click like or subscribe or hit the little bell so you'll be notified when there's a new post. You know, you may want to stop this video and go grab a bottle of wine and a glass. You know, I'm absolutely certain this will help you follow along a little bit better. Actually, you can call that applying the principles that you're learning. Are you back? Okay, here we go. Number one, what does it mean to let wine breathe? Very simply, letting wine breathe means pouring the wine in a glass or a decanter and allowing the oxygen in the air to interact with the wine. The primary thing that happens is that the exposure to the air begins the evaporation process and the oxidation process. Evaporation allows the aromas and flavors in the wine to be released. For the wine, this brief exposure to the air is like if you've been riding in a car for a year, once you open the door to get out, you're going to want to stretch your legs before you start doing anything strenuous. Wine needs to do the same thing to get all the kinks out. Number two, should you let all your wines breathe? Exposure to the air has a positive effect on the wine after at least 25 to 30 minutes. Actually, the amount of time red wines need to breathe depends on the age of the wine. Many young red wines, usually those under five or six years old, are strong in tannic acid, and they require one to two hours to breathe or open up. Mature red wines, generally those over six years old, are more mellow and need to breathe for maybe approximately 30 minutes, if at all. You know, if you wanna learn how to abbreviate this long breathing period of time and get the most out of your wine in the shortest amount of time, Check out my video, Aerating Your Wine. Back to breathing. White wines should be stored and served at a cooler temperature than red wines. <laughs> Actually, if, if you want to learn more about the temperature to store your wines, you should check out my video, How Long Can You Keep an Open Bottle of Wine? Okay, back to breathing. Opening the bottle and letting your white wines warm up several degrees from the refrigerator will let the aromas and the flavors open up. So, leave your whites out to breathe a little while, but don't let them get too warm. They're best when they're drunk chilled. Number three, does letting your wine breathe really make a difference to the taste? A wine's character can definitely change in a glass over a short period of time. Also, once the bottle has been uncorked, the wine will even evolve over several days. It's important to note just opening the wine and leaving it in the bottle won't really help that much. The opening and the neck are so small that your wine isn't going to be in contact with enough air in time for dinner. If you're going to open it tonight and not pour it so that it can breathe, but let it breathe in the bottle, then you may be ready for drinking your wine tomorrow morning for breakfast. <laughs> If, you, if that's the case, call me. I'll be glad to join you for breakfast. As I mentioned earlier, letting bolder reds breathe can help to soften tannins and release fruit flavors. However, if your wine has 
mild aromas like struck match or sulfur-like odors when you open it and you're not a fan of those odors, then allowing the wine to breathe can reduce the intensity of those aromas. Letting it breathe not only makes a difference in the smell, it definitely makes a difference in the wine's taste profile. Letting the wine breathe unlocks its flavors. How are you doing there? Is this information making sense? If it is, let's just pause a moment and let me know. Write breathe in the comments below. I'd appreciate that. Number four is how to let wine breathe. There are three basic ways of letting wine breathe or exposing it to oxygen before you drink it. The first is pouring it in a glass and swirling it around. As the wine goes up the side of the glass, you increase the surface area that's in contact with the air and it allows the wine to open up more quickly. The other two ways are aerating the wine and decanting the wine. Aeration is basically using a device to allow more air to get to the wine. Decanting your wine is using a decanter, which is a type of specialized pitcher designed to accelerate the breathing process. <laughs> you might want to check out my videos on each of these methods. Those videos are called aerating your wine and decanting your wine. I know you'll find those helpful. Number five on our agenda is try this at home. I'm sure you've seen product warnings on TV that say this enactment or reenactment you have just seen was done by a professional. Do not attempt this at home. <laughs> We're getting ready to conduct some wine research. It may be necessary for you to open a bottle of wine or two. I'm suggesting that either right now or in the future, you try this, what we're getting ready to do, try this at home. The research is real simple. Pour your wine into the glass. Take a couple of sips of wine. And for a second, think about what you just tasted. Swirl the wine and take another sip. Write down or make a mental note. Did you notice any difference in the wine? Now at this point, let the wine sit for five more minutes. Then swirl the wine. Take several more sips and write down or make mental note. What's the difference in the wine? Now let the wine breathe in the glass for 30 more minutes. <laughs> that may be tough for some of you all. Then after that 30 minutes, swirl it and sip and make your notes. Was there a difference in the wine based on how long it had been open or in the glass? I think you'll be pleasantly surprised in the difference it makes allowing the wine time to breathe. Now, it may be a good idea for you to include several research assistants to conduct this study with you. It's never a bad idea to discuss your findings with others. You could even broaden your research out by analyzing your wine along with maybe analyzing several different cheeses. Regardless, enjoy your research and let me know how it turns out. Well, there you have it. Everything you need to know about letting your wine breathe. Well, almost everything. Hang in there for the quick bonus at the end. Call the restaurant. But first, thank you so much for investing the time to watch this video. As we get ready to wrap this up, I just want to make sure that if you're looking for some wonderful wines, check out my website in the description below. And don't forget to enter your discount code ASTI Wines at checkout. Again, the discount code is ASTI Wines. Are you ready for the bonus? This is a little trick of the trade. I understand that this may not be for everybody and you won't necessarily do this every time you go out to dinner, but this is something you can do to maximize your dining experience. Now the assumption is you want your wine to be ready for you and you don't want to wait for it to open up. Basically, you want it to breathe before you drink it. Simply speaking, to do this, call the restaurant. Here's how it works. You've got a reservation at a restaurant. Sometime before you go to the restaurant, go to the restaurant's website and check out the wine list. Decide on what you're going to drink before or during dinner. Anywhere from 30 minutes to a couple hours before your reservation, call the restaurant. It makes no difference whether you call them from your house or from your car. Call them and order your wine. Oh, also, 
uh, plan to give your credit card information at that time. Typically, they won't use the credit card right then. But they'll wait until after dinner, your entire bill, before they'll charge the credit card. Actually, this is kind of cool. When you get to the restaurant or table, the waiter is expecting you, plus your wine will be ready for you also. Uh, as a side benefit, the person or people you're with will appreciate the added touch. Well, there you have it. Now you do know everything about letting your wine breathe. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit subscribe and ring the little bell to be notified when I post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Uh, click the like button if you've got something out of this video. Also, if there's someone you know that's interested in wine, make sure you share this video with them. I know they would appreciate it. Folks, I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Until next time, cheers. Thank you.